Boos are ghosts commonly found in haunted houses in the Super Mario games, but when in Luigi's Mansion, they're much more important. They're used as a sort of collectible, each level only containing one findable boo hidden in invisible objects. That being said, in both the newer games, there's a necessary item you need to find first before you can start capturing these hidden ghosts. That item is the dark light device, a nifty little doodad able to break illusions, such as objects that have turned invisible. Bro invented the item and could only describe it using the word doodad. Without further ado, let's see how long it takes to catch a boo in every single Luigi's Mansion game. Starting the game, we have a cutscene of Luigi walking towards a fat, ugly mansion. Hello? He enters inside to find a dark and creepy foyer. Up the stairs, there are no accessible doors, so I headed back down and there was an orange ghost with a key. He dropped the key and headed inside the middle door, so I followed behind. Past the door, Luigi got spooked and was saved by Professor Egan only to get punched in the face and humbled by his old age. We talk a little bit and Egad takes me in, showing me the ropes on ghost catching. After the tutorial, I'm sent back into the mansion to catch some ghosts. Inside the parlor, I extinguished all the torches and that got some paintings really angry. They released a ghost on me, but a little vacuum was all it took to beat it. It dropped a key towards another room, so I went there and caught some more ghosts. And after that, there was another room with ghosts. And after that, another and another and another and then I reached a room with a different kind of ghost. Here, I tried to catch him like a normal one, but he kept disappearing as I looked at him. I spent a good 10 minutes not knowing what to do, and without as little as a clue, I looked it up. What I had to do was wait until he exposed his heart and catch him off guard, as he yawned. He dropped a nice key for me and then unlocked the door to the next room with his spouse in it. What we had to do here was pull the curtain and have the wind expose her heart. Then it was wraps from there. Next up was a room with a baby in it. I kept trying to throw a ball at him, but I kept missing. So I played around with the horsey and that's what got him up. He was like, you wanna play? But he wasn't talking about no games. He, he wanted all the smoke. So I smacked his face with a ball, and then he went ballistic! Bro grew up in just a couple of seconds and tried to make me the baby! This part was the entire boss fight, and to beat him, you just had to wait it out until you could smack another ball at his face. As the fight goes on, the horsies come faster and faster, but it's alright cause I'm just that guy. Egad requests that I return, and inside his shop we converted the ghosts into paintings. A taste of their own medicine I see. Now in area 2, I headed down towards the basement and snagged a key in the bathroom. I made it to a ballroom and had to face around 6 normal ghosts and 2 painting ones. The painting ghosts counted as 1 since I guess they were married, and they also left me a nice key to the next room. Inside of this one now, I caught even more ghosts and found a secret area. Here there was a grate, and under this poster on the wall was a button. I pressed it, and out came a bunch of booze. Yes, this is what I needed. Hmm, I'm ready. Eged calls and says, hey dude, you, you just released a bunch of ghosts. Y you suck. But it's okay, it's water under the bridge. You can come home now. So once again, we're at Egad's spot, and now we're on mission three. So I headed up the foyer, and went into the middle room, and inside here was a tablecloth that I wanted off. And as I took it off, Bamboo, which isn't that funny of a pun, dude, was released, and he was ready to rumble. All I did was hold the R button, and just like that, he was at zero health. After all that buildup, that was the most anticlimactic fight I've ever seen. It was also really fast. On to the next game. Now it's time for the new and improved Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. Looking at the game now, as you can see, it's beautiful. And with its spooky and fun personality, along with the nostalgic bias I feel from it, this game feels whole. Starting off, we're teleported to the first mansion, and creeping up slowly, I made it to the entrance. <laughs> Peeping through the window, there are still two ghosts playing with the car. Dude, I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting nostalgic. Opening the door, we find out it's locked and need a key to get in. Hmm, how convenient! There's a rat with a key on its tail. Yeah, these 3DS games were not made to be challenging. I got the key, opened the door, and... Wow, I feel claustrophobic. Something about this game just feels so tiny. Probably because it's meant to be a 3DS game. Getting to work, I headed left and opened the hood of the car. Inside was the Poltergeist 5000. And ooh, this cutscene looks so clean! Now with the Poltergeist, I was able to suck some dirt and leave. In the room to the right, the doggy is still visible through the crack in the window. And here, what we're meant to do hasn't changed either. Blow the fan and grab the key. Into the hallway, we can see the two ghosts again. And this time, they're waving the necessary item in my face tossing it around like a ball. Once they noticed me, they, they were afraid. Not sure why, they're 
literally invisible, you know, matterless life forms or whatever. Now going down the hall, I... Hey, watch it, buddy. Back to what I was... Hey, these things just don't learn, do they? Oh, great. There are two of them now? Just get me out of here. In the foyer, these two bums stuck my green button thing on the chandelier. They then went to hide in a room only accessible using the green button thingy, so we had to go get it. After using the flash on the door, I went inside and I found a toilet. Opening the toilet, I found... Okay, that was a stupid joke. I sat on the toilet seat, and the wall spun me around, and I fell face deep in the sink. I noticed the shower was running, so I decided to tear down the curtain, and- WHAT THE F Lock Luigi up right now, dude. What? This dude is a creep! Despite the nudity, we fight off the ghost and suck him into the poltergust. After that, beat a couple more ghosts in the foyer, and then we're done. Now, for mission A2. Professor Egad invented a periscope to scan for paranormal activity, and using it, he found something unusual in the north rooms. To get there, we have to use an access mechanism found on the bottom floor. You know, this thing that moves the aquarium out of the way. But it would seem that something interferes with our plans. Returning to the foyer, there's a cutscene of a big angry brute, seemingly mad at the mechanism, so much so that it seems to have removed its gears for no reason. After that, I tried to go inside this door, but this poopy head closed it on me and ran away with the key. What a conundrum. After grabbing the key, I came back and I headed up the stairs and- Whoa. This guy! So annoying! Despite my irritation at this, I feel so nostalgic seeing this bro. It reminds me of all the good times I had as a kid. I sucked the blue ghost away and returned to the stairs. I got to the master hall, and uh, every room is blocked off with cobwebs, so I entered the parlor. I blew on the music player, sucked away the big-headed ghost, and I obtained a gear. Inside the bedroom, I sat on someone's bed, and I was sent to the study. Here, there were many ghosts and an additional gear. I hopped inside the fireplace, fell to the floor below, and was now in the studio. Here, I sucked some blue ghosts and another big red dude and obtained the third gear. Outside this room was the common hall, and down here was another room, the lab. This is where Egad was working before the whole moon was shattered in the intro. Here, there were a couple more ghosts suck, and finally, the last gear. Now to get back inside the foyer, I needed to unlock this door. Conveniently, there was a secret pocket area that had a key. Hmm. After that, I put the gears inside the access mechanism, and they didn't fit. Egad said that he'll make some repairs and make us do it later, so... I guess it's not a total waste of time. Mission A3. Professor Egad made a little crank for us to use. He also gives us insight that the sound that the periscope hears is music. And if I remember correctly, that was a boss fight. In the foyer again for the third time, I cranked the access mechanism and made the aquarium fall below to reveal a door. Past that door was the lobby and ghosts playing rock, paper, scissors. After that, I went to the library, the very one where the music was being played. While we're in the area of the boss fight, we can't actually get down to the boss from here because Luigi is a baby and afraid of fall damage. So instead we run to the other side of the room because books are being thrown at us. Now in the dining room, you can take off the tablecloth and express Newton's first law of motion. After that, pull down the little string and hop inside this weird elevator. Now I was in the kitchen, what even is this mansion? Wh why is the dining room a floor above the kitchen? <laughs> In this kitchen, we can fight medieval knights, and passing the door to the left, we finally meet Megamind. Even with such a massive brain, this guy only has a health span of 50 points. You know, speak of anticlimactic, bro. Anyway, the mission was finally over, and now we can get some booze. Mission A-4. Someone in the gloomy manor is using spirit balls, wisps used to create illusions. Egad wants us to collect one of his inventions, the Dark Light Device, which I talked to you guys about earlier, which is an attachment to the poltergust that allows the flashlight to reveal illusions. The illusions used in this context are objects appearing missing, but actually still being where they are, just invisible. So basically what the device does is make the invisible visible, but the context is reversed. Inside the common hall, I tried to get to the lab, but the door turned invisible. <laughs> Egad then informs us on an entrance from above the room, so I went on my way. Heading up the stairs, AGAIN? Bro, these people are so annoying! Up the stairs now, I got to the parlor again, and out went spirit balls, straight out of the fireplace. How convenient. I went atop the fireplace and I fell down to the lab. Once inside, the dark light device was literally emanating. As I tried to grab it, I got jump scared by a level 1 crook, but he was wearing sunglasses, so I guess he's scary now. I just used the vacuum to take it off and then, you know, Beat them like a normal ghost. And once that was over, I snagged that device. With it, 
I uncovered illusions everywhere. And dude, I was so ready to get a boo. It, it, it's been so long. I unlocked the door to the patio, did a couple of easy puzzles, and once I was in the kitchen, I got rid of some ghosts, and then I got to business. I remembered exactly what happens from here. You go into the elevator, a boo is found above the dining table, and he makes it invisible. He disappears out of the window, I make the table visible again, and then he comes back. This is it. The boo was angry, and he came at me at full force. The door was locked, and yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first boo that we will finally capture. I used the dark light device to find out where he was, and I sucked his tongue and flicked him back. And just like that, he was bouncing around the room until he hit zero health. I sucked him up once again, and just like that, it was done. <sighs> finally, it's finished. This took so long, I cannot believe they made us wait like that. Four missions! Now, for the final game. The cutscenes here look absolutely amazing, and I feel like they need to update the first game again just to have all three games on the Switch, and looking like this. In this game, there's not much more story, but but there is much more work on the cutscenes of everything. You know, entering the mansion. Wow, so easy. The little decor they have everywhere, and the unimportant ride on the elevator. All this stuff would not be made for a 3DS game, that's for sure. Once in control, the game makes us walk really slow. It's gonna take like years to catch a boo at this speed. Inside Luigi's hotel room, Luigi opens his briefcase, and he brought a flashlight specifically because he knew this invitation was weird. As we progress, we meet King Boo. It would seem that we walk faster the more scared we are. One's in the basement. Oh. Bro really got scared by towels. Okay, everything is just scaring him. Further in the basement, I found this vehicle and got some deja vu. Once I got the poltergust, the dog gave me a tutorial. From the basement, the dog leads me up to a room with Professor Egad trapped in a painting. We find the dark light device so early in this game. After releasing Egad, he wanted to run away, but Luigi tells him that all of his friends were captured. And you can't just abandon them here, you say? Heading back towards the basement, bro, what is that run? Now in the elevator, we find the game structure. It works like this. After every level, you gain another elevator button to go to the next level. And after obtaining any elevator button, you can always return to it whenever you like. Back to where Egad's car was, I beat up the blue guy and obtained two elevator buttons. Egad then displays his brilliance in inventing a mobile lab. And inside, he gives us two new pieces of tech, a virtual boy and an elevator tracker. What the elevator tracker does is extract maps for us to use whenever going onto a new floor. Floor, and it sends the data to our virtual boy. It was time for the first mission, so I headed to the fifth floor. Once inside, I was given another new feature, which was the suction shot. Using it, I could stuck a plunge rope onto items and yank them out of my way. The mission here is all about obtaining Ega's briefcase, and as soon as you get to his suite, some fat maid lady eats it up and continues to run away from you. I spent the level running around trying to get her, and after three times, I finally got her down. Once I returned to Egad, he reveals that in said briefcase was another new invention, Guiji, a new companion who is a goo version of you. As your main body sleeps, you can control him, and his ability is going through grates and jail cells, but he has the weakness of water. He can also remain sucking or blowing the vacuum while idle, and you can use that to move while needing a wheel to stay loosened. Now, for the next mission. Here what you do is basically go around gathering keys until you finally get the star key. The game annoyingly makes you have to fight a bunch of ghosts in every single room, but I'm a speedrunner, so it wasn't that bad. Finally, after getting the last key, I went up the stairs, and the annoying stair thing is also in this game. And this new ghost has a forehead so big that I had to walk around it to suck him up. After that was a little boss fight against a cop with a water gun, which wasn't that bad. Now for the next mission, floor two. I found my dog again and he led me up to a restaurant. A group of ghosts gangbanged me, but with all my new experience, I showed them no mercy, and I easily sucked them all up. In the kitchen, it would appear that I got Chef Boyardee angry by sucking up all the smoke with Guiji. So he tried to burn the room up again by giving me the smoke, but I clapped back and destroyed him. After that, he dropped the elevator button, but a rat took it. Because you can't just complete a level that fast, something annoying always has to happen. I used some cheese to lure the rat out, and I got the button again. 
but then another one took it. Dude, are you serious? The rat just kept running and running, and then he went inside a locker. As I entered, some angry pool players started throwing their balls at me. So I showed them what's up. I, I am not wasting no time. After that, I literally flipped over the locker, and then the rat just gets out while Luigi stands there doing nothing. <sighs> After that, I finally found the rat again, and it was in this really nasty bathroom, and it, this scene is just is gross. What is this? Finally... I got the elevator button. As I entered the elevator, Egad said he wanted me to check something out. So I went down to the basement and he showed me a shopping network where I can buy in-game items to help out in my playthrough. And I noticed a Boo Finder was there, but it didn't let me purchase it, so I just tried to leave. But while leaving, he did something to my Luigi and he started talking about Boos. So maybe we'll see some soon. Right outside, I got a call and Egad said that I already stumbled across a Boo. He explained that the goo vibrates to indicate that there's a boo nearby. So I checked all around the hall, but I found nothing. I went back to Egad, nothing. I went out to this room to the left and... Yep, he's here. I opened some drawers and I found it, but it left. So I went to Egad's lab. I got it to come out, but then I lost it again. So whenever that music plays when entering a room, that's where the boo is. I searched and I searched, but I kept failing to make him stay. You actually have to find the correct object that he's hiding in. So every time I found him earlier, I failed. I finally found him by seeing when Luigi was shake the hardest, and finally, I got to fight him. I used the dark light device to find him while invisible, and then I just pulled on his tongue, and I smacked him on the ground like 20 times, and finally, it was over. And now I can say, we now know how long it takes to find a boo in every single Luigi's Mansion game. So here are all the times in order of slowest to fastest. Now before concluding, I'd like to explain a little background on why I made this video. You see, basically, I'm making a prediction. Years ago, I once copied a YouTuber by the name of Jorts. I made a video touching grass in Zelda, which was originally his idea, and an hour before mine was posted, his was. So now, I expect the same thing from this guy. You see, he's made videos touching grass, touching Koopas, piranha plants, anything. But something about his last video tells me something. I think that he'll make a video for this new game as well. And I think that he's gonna do it catching ghosts. Like, you know, how fast can you catch a ghost in every Luigi's Mansion game? So instead of ghosts, I chose booze because it would take longer and they're more unique. So let's just see if my prediction was right. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you find the new remaster fun.